not chanting remembering always he wants to taste this world beauty and lust and all drinking wine and killing animals and doing all lots of that now it is people shall do he was he was not satisfied with his kingdom and his wife and his children so he was searching very beautiful more women to taste in the forest buddhi mani intelligence was that woman intelligence and the house house which is selected or oh, nine doors and lakhs and lakhs windows for doors and nine doors means two 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 one two so these are nine doors in upper door she used to come through eyes and to see beautiful sceneries by sound he wanted to taste beautiful sweet things by turn by mouth he used to to taste so many things tastes and by turn he used to quarrel and doing chattering pattering all this so all doors were there and what was five i mean a snake with five heads five hooks hooks panchapran panchapran apan dhyan dhan prana pan vesh man like without any you if you give here a air will come and it will take easily there there is also when you are going to pass the stool and urine where you were you got me oh, you are sitting no no you gave me an assignment then read the story of purandara purandara <laughs> and it has those tries to read it but it is very long very long <laughs> <laughs> now it is 7 more than 7 class is going to be over no. then uh, easily it comes down urine and by the help of air and breathing this this is uh, pradhan prominent prominent by pran by light <coughs> so all these are like life but these are not life soul is another thing. so he the intelligence about this worldly wants to taste whole world but roop ras gandh sabde sparsh but five objects of the senses sense. but never satisfy till last breathing never never and after some times who are there is one a friend always taking care of and good advice is giving who is he himself parmatma and so he is shakshi that is parmatma here always giving instruction you should not do this oh you should chant remember you should have a good association but he never cares for and after a an old lady came who is she old age and forcibly he married and then he attacked with his whole armies with jar jarns kashi ka cholera play idle lands so many things 
and defeats the king and rules the kingdom. And thus he became he becomes helpless in the old days. And he tries to be saved by this. But at once Jamdu comes, they came, come and they did for safety. After that, he was thinking of his wife. Because always he was uh, no, no. Always he was thinking he was in her. That uh, always praising her. Flatter. You are so beautiful. You are so qualified. qualified. And thus he wanted to be with her. So after this life he became woman. And after some time he was married to anyone other. But he has the association of Nora. So some devotion, the seed of devotion was planted in him. So he was married, she was again married to any beautiful young and devotee king. Malayat. And with him she was associating also and after that he received some bhakti. And then he left this body and became devotees. So Narada is telling me that if you want to be happy forever, then don't be engaged in all these worldly things. Give up at once. Anyone has not been satisfied in lakhs and lakhs births with husband and wife and in all journeys. Species. Species. Never satisfied. Like he and fire. By giving fire, that he, it will go up. So anyone can satisfy. So you should not try to do all these things. Always chanting and remembering. <coughs> Otherwise you will have to, <coughs> to test all these things. I couldn't get. So be very careful. You should not think that I am first time I am young, a beautiful girl and beautiful young boy. So I must marry and after that I will test and then give up. It is absolutely lacks and lacks but you have tested all these things. So from beginning we should be, uh, have some vairagya. Vairagya means? You cannot be happy by these things. And sometimes something I am thinking that many of you are realizing. Divorcing one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. Even some, it may be uh, in green. Greenish book. Greenish book. Yeah. That Guinness. <laughs> more than 50 <laughs> times they have changed. But none now. So he is telling that we should be very strong in this thing. Don't waste your time. What about women? Women girls? Are if that any young boy can be brahmachari fight, then it cannot be young, very strong brahmachari. They must be. By soul we are saying, by covering we are Ladies, women are male. <coughs> only this difference for only by cross. As by ch changing shari, if you will take dhoti, kurta and all other things, and then you will become like men, and they will, if they are having so much long. like long hairs, and wearing like women, and then they will be seen like women. But really we are eternal servant of Krishna. So we should try to be happy forever by surrendering ourselves in the lotus feet of Gurudev. Very strong in these things. 
you can't satisfy your this thing, appetite for what is sense. Never, never. So don't waste your time. This this verse should be given only in chanting, remembering of Krishna. After that, Parchit Maharaj was so happy. But only four days are there. Hmm? Three days have been passed. Then he told that I am so much. Uh, I am influenced so much by this. So much? Influenced. I know that, uh, I want to know how we should proceed it in this. Then he told about Bharat Charitra. What is Bharat Charitra? You can, can you do? Explain? <coughs> very brave but very powerful. Yes, so take lesson. Right here in golden types eternally, all these things. If I am success to write on your hearts all these things, my preaching is success. I am not telling that you should give up. If you are married, no harm. From there you should chant, remember. And those who are renounced, they should be renounced very strongly. Very strong. There is nothing in marriage. Only this is Delhi ka laddu. Delhi ka laddu, you know? They are sweet. But Delhi ka laddu, jo khaya wo bhi pashtaya, jo nahi khaya wo bhi pashtaya. But this is a sort of uh, laddu, yeah, sweet, yeah. sweet laddu, who ate it, uh, who did not eat it, he is repenting that I have not eaten it. And who ate it, he also repents. Why, why I ate it? <laughs> oh, there is a, 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 a sweet like It is like, like this. But a very... It will come... If you give in mouth, it will be... Galjai. Melt and come. Nothing. Bitter taste. Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii means uh, made of air. <laughs> if Maharaj Yudhishthir went to hell, all the souls suffering there, they become so happy. Oh Prabhu, you should not go from here. Your smell is giving us so much. Really? So no harm. Go. <laughs> so Bharat Maharaj was the son of Rishabdev. I have no time to explain all these things. There are so many deep things in all these things. If I am going to tell that I will be engaged only in one Upakhan this 15 days in one. But I want that you should listen to something. something. Mm. So, <clears throat> Rishabdev was a Shakti Veshavatar, um, a person empowered with a specific potency of the Lord. And he was a king. He had a hundred sons. And of these hundred sons, 91 were um, like Kshatriyas, they were also princes or kings, and the other nine, they were Brahmins, the, uh, what are they? Navayogendras. Navi and the oldest of all the sons was Bharat. And um, towards the end of his life, Lord Rishabdev, he gathered all his sons, and he instructed them that Bharat was uh, actually a very elevated soul, and that they should follow him. So after this, Rishabdev, he went to the forest and he, he gave up the kingdom and he was living as an Abadut. Abadut means one who throws off all uh, rules and regulations. 
So, after this, Bharat Maharaj became king. And he was a very powerful king. And uh, he ruled for several years. And then while he was still a young man, he also gave up the kingdom. And he went to the forest in order to perform austerities, in, in order to uh, develop his love for Krishna. So it is said that he gave up the kingdom very easily, although uh, as conditioned souls in this world we are very attached to material enjoyments. Uh, and Bharat Maharaj, he had great facility for enjoyment, being a king, he had wealth, and uh, his wife was young and beautiful, so so much facility he had for material enjoyment. But he gave it up all very easily because of his uh, awakening of spiritual taste and his awakening of love for the Lord. So he went to the forest and there he was engaged in deep meditation and worship of the Lord. And it is said that he attained to the stage of bhav, to the stage of rati. And at that stage, um, Surya Shakti is awakened in the hearts and one awakens deep attraction to the Lord. So he was at a very elevated stage of spiritual advancement. But one day, he saw that there was a deer who was uh, running from a lion or a tiger and uh, came to the bank of a river and was being pursued. And out of great fear, the deer jumped across the river. And as it, uh, the deer was also uh, pregnant with uh, a baby deer. And when it jumped across, the baby deer was released from the womb. And the mother deer, when it crossed to the other side, it gave up its life. So Bharat saw all of this and he became compassionate for the small deer. So he went and rescued the deer from the water and then began to take care of it and nourish it and look after it. And gradually his attachment for the deer increased. And, uh -huh. and as a result, okay. mm -hmm. okay. as a result, his uh, spiritual practices and meditation began to dwindle. So, uh, his attachment grew more and more for the deer. And then one day, the deer disappeared from the ashram. And he became greatly distressed. He was looking everywhere, but he could not find the deer. And he was lamenting so much. And then, the end of his life approached. And just before he left his body, the deer again came. And he saw the deer, and because he was so absorbed in meditating on the deer, when he left his body, he took the form of a deer. Although because of his... Deer came? Hmm? I could not understand. Deer came? At the end of his life. How he came? <laughs> Never he returned. No? No, no. Only maybe he observed the deer. Oh. He was only remembering. Deer, oh, where he came? Where he came? Never returned. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... <clears throat> remembering and remembering, he died. So when he died, he was remembering, so he became dear in Left Next slide. Go on. Just as Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, that whatever one meditates on at the time of death, then one will attain to that form. So he attained the form of a deer, but because of his spiritual advancement, uh, he was able to remember his previous life. And so when he took the body of a deer, he was lamenting greatly. That uh, why did I become attached to this deer and I don't want to make the same mistake again? So even though taking birth in the body of a deer, he left his uh, mother and father deer and he went to the same place where he was performing austerities and there in the body of a deer, he engaged himself internally in remembering the Lord. And also having association of the rishis there because it was situated on the bank of Ganges and Gandaki. So, so many races were there, always uh, discussing Harikatha, Srimadhu Purana and all others. The whole day he used to hear 
And in morning and evening he used to go to Ganges and take some. And in last he took Ganges water and he took bath and he left his body. Then he became Jarbara. In Brahman, he became as a son of a Brahman boy. So the word Jara means inert or matter. And he was known Why as he became Brahman? In the last time, when he was dying, he was thinking, Oh, I should be renounced from this world. I will know Brahma, who is Brahma. And thus, thinking this, he have a uh, chance. chance to be a Brahmin boy, and he had chance to develop his tattva gyan. So he, Krishna man. So his father was uh, a very qualified Brahmin, and he was very eager to teach his son all the Brahminical duties. But Bharat was thinking that uh, previously I became uh, entangled in material existence due to uh, attachment for a deer. So he did not want to make the same mistake again. And he was thinking that if he followed carefully the instructions of his father, that so much uh, material facility would come. He would receive respect in society. His parents eventually would want to have, get him married. So in this way, he would again become entangled in material existence. So therefore, although he was a highly realized soul, externally he behaved like a very dull person. And like mad. And like mad. Therefore, he was called just naked sometimes here, there. Then, brother's wife used to give him. She started now with the supplement. Not good thing, but even he was so healthy and, and he was happy. So, because he behaved just like a dull headed person, very foolish, he was abused and criticized by his brothers and his brothers' wives. But he did not care for this. He was always self-satisfied within. And especially after his father passed away, then the other, his brothers and other family members, they took advantage of him. And they had him doing very hard labor in the fields and just feeding him very like coarse grains. But he never complained in any way. So one day, a band of Dakwites came, and uh, they were looking for some person, for some like animalistic type man, to offer in sacrifice. They were worshippers of the goddess Kali. And the person who they had selected for this had escaped from them. So then they came upon this Jarabharat, and they saw that, oh, he is a suitable person for this. Because he's just like an animal, he's just very dull, dull-witted. So he's a suitable person to offer in sacrifice. So, although he was very strong and powerful, and he could have uh, resisted, but he was just seeing this as the mercy of the Lord. He was seeing that uh, whatever the Lord desires, uh, I will accept. So he did not resist in any way. And they took him off and took him to but the place. always remembering. Krishna, always. Anyone could not uh, understand that always he is in, in like trance. So then they took him before the deity of the goddess Kali and they tied him up and they were just about to kill him and at that moment the goddess burst out of the deity form and she had many arms and very ferocious looking with uh, fangs and so many, a garland of skulls and different weapons in her hands. And she immediately uh, decapitated all the Dakwites and saved Bharat Maharaj or Jarabharat. So after this, he was wandering in the country. Oh. And all well. Uh, given in fire, all the dark eyes, 
Kali began to tell, request him. Oh, you accept me? You don't be in this way. Otherwise, worldly people will not know you. So, please, any offense I have done or done by my persons, please excuse. I know that you are more, more, more powerful than me. But you are playing like a Man. drama. I All will Krishna Shakti will save me. So be merciful to me. In spite of some mercy that I can do bhajan to Krishna. So the devotees are so high. Who are chanting, remembering Krishna even more than all demigods. Then one day he was sitting in the night, anywhere in field, and what became? Rahugan came. <coughs> so he was. Uh, there was a king Rahugana who was traveling throughout his kingdom, and he was carried by the palanquin carriers. And one of the palanquin carriers became ill, so they had to find someone to replace him. So they came upon this Jarabharat and they saw that he was very stout and strong. So they thought he is a good person to do this job. So they engaged him. But Jarabharat being a great devotee and not wanting to uh, commit any type of violence towards any living entities, as he was walking, he, he was looking down on the ground to see if there were any ants there. And so he was walking out of sync with the other plankton carriers, which made the ride unbalanced and very uh, upsetting to the king. So then the king began to chastise all the plankton carriers, and they were putting the blame on this Jambarat. They were saying, it's not our fault, but he's not walking properly. So <clears throat> then the king began to chastise him. Began to first joke. Oh, you are very big person. You cannot carry so much load. Oh, you are carrying a load. And even he was not speaking anything. Then he became angry. Oh, you are not thinking that I am king. I will punish you. Always remind this. And what he told more? So, after uh, insulting him in, in various ways, uh, they went on walking again, but the same scenario happened again. So then the king became angry and began to chastise uh, Jad Bharat and wanted to punish him. You are him. very fat, you are very strong, still you are going, this is nonsense, I will punish at once you. I am king of this whole world. Then Jarbharat smiled and very honorably he told something. What he told? I don't remember all the. Uh, no, you details. don't remember? Sit <laughs> He told. You remember? Huh? Then you should stand. But don't, don't talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> One, two hours. <laughs> so, when Bharat Maharaj did the same thing, then King, King became angry and told... Uh, you can for it, for it. You don't know I am emperor of this world, I am ruler of this world, I can punish you. Then Bharat Maharaj, Jad Bharat mercifully told, Rahu Ganaita Tapasa. No, not now. <laughs> it is in the last. <laughs> That uh, 
if any there is body then it is for carrying loads but who is king and who is emperor and who is subjects means praja you told me that you are very lean and thin first and then you told me so fair who is lean who is fat who is carrying loads if there is loads then it should be carried but what is that load and he stopped to tell me okay i was going to maharaj kapil dev oh, who is this person and he jumped up from his palanquin and begged and he did pranam to the dust feet of that bharat who are you <coughs> and why you are doing so but i think i could not understand i am going in association of kapil dev and all races but i could not understand oh i am same bharat so many hundred years past i was bharat and my sons uh, in my dynasty after so long time i am saying oh oh you are bharat i have heard it out for so many times and again again and again he began to tell me i could not understand your all words to <coughs> tell that you just try atma i am atma so eternal servant of krishna but i have forgotten him and that is now i have come in this shape covered by this material body and sukshma body body of mind and now i am thinking i am fat you are thinking that you are imparat for for how many days you are imparat who is imparat this body is imparat or this soul is <coughs> this body is thin you are thin or this matter is thin who is fat i know that there is only who only one load what load load of this body thinking all these worldly things this is only load the load of palanquin is not load so we are so you should understand anyone is not fat atma is what partitional so there should be no any worldly um, false ego in this try to realize atma we told that if atma has no relation with worldly suffering sorrows and everything and he is quite separate from this body and mind then why he is suffering so much he told that if you take in a vessel water keep it in fire he is telling king that take a vessel in that vessel water some and keep it on the fire fire by fire the first the hot the pot will be become hot and by this in touch water will be and keep some rice there that they will be boiled no no direct fire to rice rice so if there is atma here covered with this body the suffering of this body will affect that atma so but you are telling that no suffering no day nothing is there how can you realize all these things and he told 
व्यक्त रहो कन तत्पसान जाति न चैज्ञा निर्वाह प्रणाद गृहात्वा न छंदसा नैव जलाग्नि सूजो महत पदो महत पदो रजो भिषेक ओ यू कैन नॉट नो अबाउट दिस थिंग्स वनली बाय सर्विंग दे फिट दिस स्टफ रियलाइज सोल्स डिवोटेड सो कैन क्वालिफाइड वनली यू विल टेक बाथ बाय द लोटस डस्ट ऑफ दैट काइंड्स ऑफ महात्मा साधु और डिवोट देन यू कैन रियलाइज यू कैन नॉट रियलाइज दिस बाय तपसा तपसा माने स्टोरीज न च इच्छा वशि व्हाट वशि गणेश दुर्गा शंकर और नॉट हियर इज टोल्ड दैट कृष्ण वशि निर्वाण वड़ा बाय बाय राज्य यू कैन नॉट रियलाइज बाय ग्रीहात्मा ग्रीहात मींस being grihastha and always doing fire sacrifice swaha swaha it will not do na chandasa only reading vedas om sahasra shiva purusha like this likes and likes parts by shamri jat athar ved not in my this jala if you are worship water Like we going to prayag or here that these are teeth, but not serving devotees like that. Devotees are more powerful than Ganges water, but that devotee should be devotee, not having any dwesh, animality or an envious or. So truly, he knows how to serve Vaishnava, having prayed to Krishna, and to reject the persons who are bemuk to Krishna. Always jumping and remembering his dog in Krishna. He has mercy for all. No? Also, Surjayi, someone, oh, giving water to Krishna. thinking him god om purvashwa tat savitur varanyam sam thinks that this is the mantra of sun doing no it will be that you can never realize god krishna supreme personality of our god is and you cannot realize by this thing atma also bina mahat padar yog shekam like narattikli taking one remnant of mahaprasad and hearing hari katha he became liberated ajami taking only one name and he be was he um, revealed his everything hmm? so vali mahapajor bhiya bhishan vali by the help by the serving of the lotus dust of such kinds of devotees Anyone can easily realize all these things. Otherwise, never in whole life. So we should try to serve devotees like this. A guru never tells that one of us that don't go and listen to Shukadev Goswami. <laughs> They cannot. And if they are telling, then they are not good. Sadhu sang, sadhu sang, sadhu sang. Sarva shastre kar. Law matra sadhu sang. Sarva shridiyo. He tells. Where ever there is bona fide Hari Katha is going on, try to listen. Sukhdev Goswami has not a single um, what disciple who were there who assembled there. All, all were liberated. Who were they? So we should try to uh, go to the bodies, serve them, and associate them. There is no bound, uh, what? Wall of anything, caste, creed, 
जय कृष्ण भजय वैराग्य इज तत्व ज्ञान इज देयर सो वी वॉन्ट टू लर्न हिज वैराग्य एंड हिज प्रैक्टिस इवन ही वॉज सो हाई हैविंग वॉज क्वालिफाइड टू बी रति देयर इन हिज हॉर्ट बट ही वॉज अटैच टू वर्डली थिंग लाइक ए डीयर एंड ही केम डाउन फॉर थ्री वर्स डोंट ट्राई टू बी लाइक दैट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर But quickly, by the association of hugs, he quickly again had same rati, and then rati to shuddh devur bhakti, and then prema bhakti, and he was liberated. Today, Mandi is up to this again. Anything to? गौरप्रिया Beloved of Gau Chandra, it may be like this to be a. So you are lucky to have this. Gau Priya ki. What is your name? Your daughter's. Daughter can stand up. What name? Stand up. Radha Priya. Oh, Radha Priya is good name. <laughs> Radha Priya ki. रेवती रेवती इज ऑल्सो सो गुड नेम सो रेवती देवी की कीर्तन ओ ये सो सो एंड ये सो वन टाइम ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट ऑफ वाज लॉस्ट ड्यूरिंग हरि नाम संकीर्तन दे बिलोंग टू देयर कृष्ण प्रभु दे हैव ऑल्सो इनिशियल ऑफ द डी के डी के इज रिटर्न ऑफ द तुम किसको दे दिया तो लोग मिट गया है हाँ तो ये सुन दो
Mother Navin. Hey, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna,
Oh, not in class? We're <laughs> 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 waiting for you, Gerd, eh? Come on, come on. Well, when you have them, is that your house? Mike? Kaya. 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 She has forgotten me, but I can forget. You can forget. How is your husband? He's here. No, he couldn't come. And who is he? This is Anuradha. She's a last time. She's a friend of mine from Eugene. Yeah. She came to my mother. Very jolly. You have to prepare something huh? for me. You are here for a few days. You are coming to Asia now? No. Why not? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> And you must come, you must come. Yes. <laughs> yes. Video. How you want to eat this? My daughter will leave at least seven days with me. Otherwise, she has nothing to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Do you soon be? No harm. He will just take you. <laughs> no harm. No, that's nice. I know. I know. I know. This is Aryo Singh from Vrindavan. He was in Vrindavan Gurukula yeah. for many years. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you. Yeah. What's your name? Aryo. 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 Oh, I live in Eugene right now. I came to teach in Bangalore. Teach what? Teacher. He was helping to teach the boys. Um, she wrote her? Yes, Mula. She wrote her name. Oh, Gopa. Oh, she wrote her name. Oh, she wrote No problem. Sometimes you need to understand with her. How much?
subject is some philosophical. So, some of you cannot have so much taste for it. But it is the plate form, just like a, to make a plate form for her. So, I wanted to explain, but here only today and after one day, then we will go to Beijing. <coughs> so, I am going to explain some special things, the essence, that how we can follow this, but try to follow it very strictly, very strictly. If you are not following all these things, enchanting, one is sixteen round and not doing anything else, or reading some books, it will not do. We should try to make this platform. I know that something, some devotees taking a him ganja, also wine, but they cover all these things that anyone cannot see. But their faces so tell very... Uh, all cannot uh, read, but some can read. So, you are cheating yourself. So try to be very bold and very strong in these things. Don't take all these things. Otherwise, Kali will be there. Now I am coming to... We are told that there are three aspects of Parthatva, Advaya Dhyan Parthatva. Brahma, Paramatma and Bhagavad. Among trees, Brahma, uh, Bhagavan, uh, Paripurna Sarvasakti Vishisht Bhagavan Iti. When that Parthatva is Paripurna, when with all his energy, Potency, qualities, root, gun, lila and all other things, then he is called Bhagavan. <coughs> when he enters partly in the hearts of jivas like Sakshi, then he becomes And when we see only through gyan, 
then he uh, becomes like Brahma. But they, these two aspects, devotees should not have any link with them. The object of the pure bhakti is Bhagavan. <coughs> In also Bhagavan, there are two kinds of Bhagavan. Bhagavan is one, but two aspects. Where Saru Shakti is fully there with Supreme Personality of Godhead. All kinds of opulence are there. So it is called Aswarja, Aswarja like Parvyum Narayan, that aspect. And where there is Sarup Shakti in his fullest, fullest, fullest. what? Most of most complete. complete most. In sweet mood, then it is called Madhuri. What is written here? Where the internal potency, Sarup Shakti, displays its complete opulence, Aishwarya. There Bhagavan appears as Vaikuntanath Narayan, mm. and where the internal potency displays its supreme sweetness, Madhurya, there Bhagavan appears as Sri Krishna. Mm. Wow. <coughs> in spite of being predominant almost everywhere, Aishwarya loses its charm in the presence of Madhurya. In, in this world, everywhere, appellance is more powerful than Sri but no example of where uh, appearance is covered with what? Sweet, sweet thing. Not example. Only we can see appearance and we will be charmed. Oh, so appearance. But in one, sometimes a sublime apart. Semblance. Uh, huh? Semblance. Semblance can be can see. That I have forgotten the name of that prince of England. Charles. 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 He has love for any lady. Hmm? <laughs> And, but lady was not lord in lord family. No? A prince can marry that lady, but he will not be the king of England. That was bad. And at that time, whole world life, everywhere, British rule was there. Then parliament told him, that you can marry, but you will be deprived of whole being imperial. And he kicked that appellence. And he preferred love to that lady. This is something abhash. Not reflection, perverted reflection. But there in Vrindavan, Gulo, Vrindavan. Always appellance is defeated by this mother's root. Always. So, in this world there is no example of this mother's root. Very little, rare. So, all we are attracted to appellance. Not to see. Very hard. And those who are like this, they are called Aradhanuga. 
only by yog. If anything will come in your heart for this Mahapuri Chabut, he will always reject happiness, always reject. Even he has a little mood, little attraction or greed for that. But it is very rare in this world. Here, Bhukti Mukti Spriha Jawa is telling that these are two kinds of what you should read. I mean, as long as the two witches of the desires for bhukti and mukti remain in the devotee's heart. What name? Mm -hmm. Pisachi? Witches. 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 What is, what is called witches? Pisachi. Pisachi. In Western country, they are? They have? <laughs> I mean that in India I'm only Pisachi that there. I forgot the more than India. In Bhukti and Mukti. What Bhukti? Is a desire to no. desire to sense gratification in any way and to desire mukti, any kind of mukti. These are two very great wishes. If Bhakti will see that they are there, she will never look there, never come. Bhakti is like a very, uh, very soft, uh, teeny aged um, Brajabalika. Huh? Very, very short. Not teeny years, but tender. Tender. Tender is just born. Very beautiful, very sweet, but very and uh, soft. If any and it jadi dhup jor se a jai. Strong sunshine. Hot. Hot. Or anything. She will be mujha jai. She will be faint. Faint pan mujha na. Shrink. Mujha na means by? Vida. 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 Mujha jai. So, where there is a little smell of these things too, bhakti will never come. But we see that he is chanting, remembering he has been initiated by anybody, any devotee. Sometimes he weeps, sometimes oh, chanting so, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, walk so much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. As if he is upset. <laughs> Sometimes, Sri Nandar Hari Prabhu, one of the best disciple of Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and friend of my Guru, Nandar Hari Prabhu. If you see that anyone is chanting Hare Krishna, restless, going chanting, then you should think that he will not be in mud now, he will give, give up this mud forever and he will go away. This is the shit. Sometimes. So, <coughs> these are pisachi. They will eat us. Not eat us, but swallow. Devour us. Oh, and bhakti will go forever. So, go on. Kai bhakti. 
Then Sarup Siddha Bhakti will not come. It may be that Sangha Siddha or Arup Siddha will come. Can you tell what is? Hmm. What is? Arup yeah. Siddha. Siddha and Sangha Siddha. Arup means to superimpose. So as like. For More example, loudly as you speak. For example, hmm. if there's somebody who likes to garden. Then they think, I will garden so many beautiful vegetables and flowers because I like to garden, that is my propensity. And when the vegetables have grown, then I will offer to Takwarji. Yeah. But we are actually doing the activity because we like it and the fruits we are offering to Takwar. So that is like superimposing Takwar onto our desires. So it is called Arop Siddha Bhakti. Yes. Sangha Those who are actually not Sarupa Siddha Bhakti, Shravadam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pad Sivanam, Archanam, Bandhanam, Dasyam, Satkam, Atma Vedan, or 64 kinds of bhakti, or uh, 5 kinds of bhakti, 3 kinds of bhakti, Nam Sangha Really, there is not. But we are thinking that. To make a garden is bhakti, because by that I will serve her partly to Krishna. I will make a goshala for thousand cows, and some of milk, one kilo, I will give daily to Thak, and rest I will enjoy. So make a garden, to make a goshala is not among the sixty Four kinds of bhakti. No. Kind of, there are not. But he, actually I have offered myself in the lot of feet of my Guru Dev and Krishna. And then making any garden fully to serve, then it is bhakti. Where I am doer and all things are mine and up. Among them, something I am taking and offering to Krishna. This is Arvashita. Uh, like Jatkaroshi, Jadashnashi, Jajjuhoshi, Dadashita, Jatapasyaskante, Yotak Purusha Madara Pranam. You should, Arpan means? Offer. Offer, offer me. But if someone is offering nearly everything, Huh? If someone is offering nearly everything, even it is Arushita. Who are who? you? are doer of all these things? You are not doer. You are the eternal servant of Krishna. Eternal. So your everything is will be for Krishna. You are not doer. I am doing anything to please Krishna because I am of him. There is more to be there. Otherwise, Arup Siddha Bhakti. And Sangha Siddha Bhakti? <coughs> what is Sangha Siddha? Sangha Siddha Bhakti means, for example, I am not devotee, I am not Vaishnav, but if I come into the Sangha of Vaishnavs, so then some of their qualities will come into me, like humility and charity. Oh. Can you tell? Well, my understanding is that Sangha Siddha means that someone is developing the qualities uh, which are favorable for Vaishnavism, but there is not actual bhakti in, those, in the ah, manifestation okay. of those qualities. Like this. Okay? Or anything more you can tell? <coughs> Sangha Siddha means that which is very mm, first, mm, carefully you should hear oh sangha sangha said that means that which is associated with devotion so just like in shikshastak sapranara pisu nichana tarava pisu nichana mani namana deva kirtaniya sadahi so as one is performing bhakti there are different qualities which are said to be qualities of the devotee, like humility, tolerance, peacefulness, kindness to others, nonviolence, etc. So, if one is uh, exhibiting these different qualities, 
Um, and with some connection to devotion, they'll be known as Sangasiddha Bhakti. But those qualities in and of themselves are not bhakti. Uh, yes, sir, see. Where there is no Sarup Siddha Bhakti, nothing Sarup Siddha Bhakti, Samadam Kirtanam Vishnu Vishmaya. But these are in devotees something, like 26 kinds of qualities which has been told in Srimad Bhagavatam. Kripalu, Akrita Droha, Sattva, Sar, Mauni and all other things. They are really no bhakti, sarup siddha, sarvadam kratam vishnu. They are helpful. So, if they are with bhakti, they are, they are also called bhakti, but sarvadam siddha, not sarvadam siddha. What I told you. You said that when the 26 qualities of devotee are present, these are not anywhere found them, not related, only one. That is related. And all twenty five kinds of all this are like virtues, good virtues. Hmm. So when they, when these twenty-five qualities are present in a devotee, that um, they are favorable to bhakti, but they themselves they're not swarups of the bhakti. And you gave example of the renunciation of Raghunath Das Goswami. Yeah. That though he is Mahabhagavad, uh -huh. but his renunciation still is an example of Sangasila. His Bhairagya and all other things. But he was in Raghunath Das Goswami, so his Bhairagya is also natural and bhakti. But he separated from bhakti, that virtues, they are not So, in this word, when we are using this word Sang Siddha Bhakti, this means then it is associated with Sabrup Bhakti. When we use this term, related, anyhow, then they will be called Bhakti, but Sang Siddha Bhakti. We should know and try to differentiate them uh, and try to follow Sarup Siddha Bhakti. And you can see that all virtues and all Arup Siddha Bhakti will come automatically in him. In Suddharu, in pure form. form. If he is doing brooming, brooming is not in any of bhakti, brooming, but brooming will also be bhakti, pure bhakti. So anything done for Krishna pleasing is tool clearing. Everything will be bhakti if our bhakti is here too. Now he is defining what? Um, in the Jaya Dharma, when the Mayavadi Sannyasi comes into the association of the uh, Vaishnava, he has so many good qualities from his practice of Dharma. Yes. So is this the case of, of Sangha Siddha Bhakti? No. When he was in Kashi, performing all these things, it was for Mukti. They are help, helper of mukti. So they are not samasiddha. But when he came and he took initiation and he surrendered and he began to do sarup siddha bhakti, then all bhakti was turned into bhakti, samasiddha. So then that became samasiddha bhakti. But when he was pure devotee, then they were not samasiddha. So the same qualities, first they were Sangha Siddha, then they became Swarup Siddha. Yes. Yeah. Mm. This is a problem. This jana me nirograna swadashtu bhojan ki prapti. There, bhakti mukti is prayer. Well, bhakti mukti is prayer. 
enemies will come and your bhakti will if it is sraddha, very little fraction of sraddha, it will also go on. So be very careful for it. Only taking sannyas and red cloths, or tilak mala, even initiation also taking. Oh, she knows that you have not taken initiation. What we take initiation by fire sacrifice is in it is external. We should try to take it internal. internal. So this mukti, this wishes, know whether he is a real devotee or not. If not, she will fall. Go on. If bhakti resides in the devotee's heart, then even while living amidst the objects of the senses, he will be able to remain detached from them and will be capable of abandoning the desire for bhakti. Bharat Maharaj left this world, went there. It may be that he has some attachment for God. So attachment there, it went to a dear boy and he was what dispelled from there. So we should think like this. <coughs> Go. Therefore, Sri Rupa Goswami says, Bhakti Rasavi Sindhu, Guru Jim Dahatastra Janasya Bajane Hare, Vishayeshu Garishto Abhi, Araka Prayo Vinayate, Manasakta Sivishayanata Ham Kuyunjata, Nirvanda Krishna Sam Bande Pramara Gimchate, Parapam Chikataya, Pratya, Arisam Bandi Vastana, Mamuk Shri Pratya Gubara Gim, Tandukatate. Tidya Slokes. Abhakti Rasam is Sindhu of Ruk Gushan. Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Gushami Thakur always remember everywhere. For weakness, this is important. Otherwise, Bhakti will never come. come. Anasakta Sabishyan, no, you should read this meaning. So very, very attentively. Don't um, sleep. Don't be idle. Try to know. When the jeev develops a taste for Krishna Bhaja, at that time his excessive attachment to the objects of the senses starts gradually fading. Mm. Then with a spirit of detachment, he accepts the objects of the senses only according to his needs, knowing those objects to be related to Krishna and behaving accordingly. This is called Yukta Vairagya. Accepting only those things which are favorable for our progress in spiritual life and rejecting all those which are not. So, uh, Yukta Vairagya means that we, we have to discriminate what we should you for Krishna and Guru Sarvita and other people You? Yes. To accept the object of the senses in the service of Krishna and engaging those things in the service of Krishna. Like what you do? So you use the object of the senses only in relationship to the service of Krishna. Hmm. Tripura is telling, okay? Yukta Vairagya means appropriate renunciation. It means to understand that everything belongs to Krishna, nothing belongs to me. Mm. Therefore, in that sense, there is uh, there's nothing. But not talking fully, fully. Only what we require to maintain our life, we can take. If you are going to Puri, in Anand Bajar, have you seen Anand Bajar? You know the name? You all? Anand Bajar is the market of Mahaprasadam. So, varieties of preparations of laddu, puri, kachauri, so much dal, very delicious, and so many sweets, various kinds of sweets. And if you think that all are Mahaprasadam. 
So we should take daily all delicious foods <laughs> up to here. Then what will we? You can chant, you will have to go to bed. <laughs> It may be that you will be so far and then you can have a require of, you may require of a very beautiful Seva Dashi. <laughs> Seva Dashi you know? Seva Dashi are beautiful boy girl, uh, friend. Seva Dashi. Seva Dashi or Seva So we should not take all, only to maintain our life. We can take very little. And then praying, Shadi, Govindi, Nam. Not only uttering, taking it here. I am not going to eat Mahaprasad, I am going to serve. When I am taking name, then I am serving Krishna name. When I am reading any book, I am serving Bhagavad. When I take chanting name, I am serving Krishna. Like this. Always serving Bhu. Then you will get rid of Maya. Otherwise not. Go. So you should try to be, to, uh, to follow Jukta Bhairag. But sometimes we do opposite to this. By the name of following Jukta Bhairag, we do everything. Like uh, last Thursday, we played a drama, drama of Gita Sansar. So we should not try. Very boldly and strongly, we should try to follow this Jukta Bhairag. Prabhunath Das Goswami was Jukta Bhairag. Gaur Prasho Das Baba Ji Maharaj. Kundari Vidya Nidhi, Rairamananda, all the devotees of Satan and Mahan. Like this. Oh. The renunciation of those who, desiring liberation from matter, reject the objects of the senses, considering them to be illusory, is called palabhu or useless. What? Hmm. Yeah, but... <coughs> Uh, after a sense gratification, if one comes to this conclusion that this is full of misery, then he desires that we should give up such gratification totally and get the liberation. And such type of desire of renunciation is falgu, that is an artificial way. Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. Oh, without seeing. Um, just as Brahmachandra Prabhu was saying, that if one is seeing that in engaging in sense gratification, one is getting so much misery, then, as it is stated here, one will see this as um, useless, and then they will falsely try to renounce without having the proper realization that ultimately everything is part of Krishna's energy and everything should be utilized in Krishna's service. So such. Um, dry renunciation is called foul by record, false renunciation. Because externally there's renunciation, but in the heart there's still so much desire to enjoy the others. So ultimately one will have to enjoy it again. Like Mayavadi, hmm? they reject all these things, all the beautiful things. That this is Maya. Noiti, noiti. Noiti means? Oh, this is Maya, this is Maya, rejecting all this. But Vaishnav knows that if you are rejecting everything, you will die at once. Why not in this way that all the things in the whole world are of Krishna? Only of Krishna. Nothing is separate. So, we can utilize all these things as a perfect yeah. uh, If anything. And he uses it to offer Krishna. And what are essential to maintain our life, we can do it. Otherwise, if you are rejecting everything, that 
it is Mahaprasad Singh, but not Mahaprasad Delicious food you are seeing. Uh, Harinam Kirtan, you are seeing like, oh, sound like material sound. Any Vaishnav sing? Oh, this is one day. Dead body like that. So, this is Maya Bhava. So, we should be not Falgu Barak. Falgu Barak means a river in Gaya. Under current. You can see only sands upside. But if you take some sand there, or oh, you will see that current is there. So, externally, we are giving up all resecting, but by heart internally, he is wishing so much. So, this is Falbhudubha. Or Markat Bhairatya. Monkey says, no, nothing. No houses, nothing. But always their sight is there where any fruit, vegetable, anything to eat. Always enjoying with female monkeys. They have nothing else to do. So they are paragya, nakedness, nothing on him, of his own. No possession. No, nothing. So this is Falgu Bhairagya, Margat Bhairagya. Sometimes Esmasan Bhairagya. Esmasan Bhairagya means anyone is dead in India. Crematorium. 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 That anyone has dead and you have taken him to burial ground. All are weeping. Then you see that, oh, one day all it die. So I also must die. Now I am renounced. I have nothing to do with anybody. And he became so renounced. renounced. And when he returned to his home, Forget his motherless ma mother had died. Motherless children were weeping and father saw. At first in burial ground he became like that. But when he returned, all boys were weeping and they came in the lap of father. And then again Marpat Bhairat went and he began to be attached with them. So these are not Bhairat. These are called Marpat Halku Bhairat. Go on. You should always know that if Bhakti is coming, his two sons are bound to come. Jnana and Vairagya. And then Jnana and Vairagya, that Tattva Jnana and Yukta Vairagya. Or helping always. Otherwise, if you have no Bhakti, there is Gaya and Vairagya, they will pull you, drag you to help. It is not renounce the objects of the senses, but changing the enjoying tendency towards them while maintaining an understanding of their relation to Krishna cannot be called sense gratification. Group, form, paras, taste, gandha, smell, sparsh, touch, and shabd, sound are the objects of the senses. We should try to perceive the world in such a way. This is more important. We have listened it very carefully. What? We should try to perceive the world in such a way that everything appears related to Krishna. Yes. Meaning that we should see all jeeves as servants and maidservants of Krishna. Yeah. See gardens and rivers as pleasurable sporting places for Krishna. What he told? Oh, Prabhu. What he told? I was not listening to you. Huh? <coughs> My mind is somewhere else. Why? 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 You should repent. For a moment you should stand up. Again here. You should repent. We should try to perceive the world. I, I know who are not hearing. I'm not mentioning. I will mention them and I will tell them also to stand up. Oh. I know. 
some consideration towards half of these. <laughs> not, not to, but no consideration, no concession. concession to you all. Especially red cloths. Okay. We should try to perceive the world in such a way that everything appears related to Krishna. Mm. Meaning that we should see all jeeves as servants and maidservants of Krishna. Yeah. See gardens and rivers as pleasurable sporting places for Krishna. Mm. See that all types of edibles are to be used as an offering for his pleasure. In all types of aromas, perceive the aroma of Krishna Prasad. Mm. In the same way, see all types of flavors are to be relished by Krishna. See that all the elements we touch are related to Krishna, and hear only Harikatha or narrations describing the activities of his great devotees. How we can see? No, you can see. But be attentive. Don't take your like hearing, but oh, you will know very Oh, he is not here. Don't do like this. This is important, not that what we are thinking. Let come here, expensing so much, so many hundreds of dollars, only to hear, not to take enjoyment or anything. If you are thinking like this, you must be there, not coming here. So fight on your mind. No? Now you can tell me. You should see everything in relation to Krishna. Everything, everything is related to Krishna, everything is for Krishna's service. How you can see that mountains, rivers and gardens are Bihar Pumi of Krishna. Enjoyment? Places. Places of Krishna. How? How you can see? You see a tree that is bending over, you can think it's like Vrindavan where the trees are in separation from Krishna. If you see a lake, you can think that it's like Radhakuman or Shana. You should see very easily like these. Oh, beautiful garden. 